What's going on everybody? Back again today to do a little discussion video about The Matrix. So The Matrix 4, I believe it's called The Matrix Resurrected, I believe, is going to be coming out soon in theaters. And The Matrix is one of my favorite sci-fi series. I really like it. Uh, I did not grow up with it. I discovered it uh, probably like early college, maybe like senior year of high school. Uh, but I really liked the concept. I really liked the action scenes. I liked a lot about it. And the thing about The Matrix is that the first one blew everyone's mind. It was really well received by audiences and critics. But as the movies went on, especially with the second movie... They got really kind of confusing, and I think people kind of felt that they were a little hard to follow. They were kind of like, wait, what's going on? This is supposed to, what's ha who's doing what now? And I, I've i watched the entire, the trilogy, all three movies, at least seven times. I like it that much. And every time I watch it, I understand it a little bit better. And at this point, I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on it, so... Uh, in preparation for the next movie to come out, I'm going to kind of try to explain the confusing parts of this Matrix trilogy to anyone out there who finds it a little hard to understand and would like some stuff cleared up. So, it really all comes down to one scene in the second movie, and that's this scene. The scene where Neo confronts the architect. This scene confused the living hell out of so many people. Uh, it, it, and I'll, I'll admit it, it confused me the first time I saw it. I had to rewatch it at least three times, just right there, just rewinding it and just continuously keep listening to what the guy was saying to try and piece this thing together. So basically what happens, Neo shows up to this, to the architect. He shows up, he... He meets him in that room with all the TV screens, and the architect tells him a couple of things, informs him of a couple things that Neo finds hard to believe but for at first, but he pretty quickly comes to accept them. Uh, the architect tells Neo, uh, this is not the first time all this has happened. Okay, He tells Neo, we built the Matrix, the machines, we built the Matrix to subdue humanity, and we built it a long time ago. And when we first built it, the idea was, let's make it perfect. Let's give the human beings a, like, a, a perfect, blissful utopia to live in. And then they won't want to rebel and fight back. Well, it turns out that they made it a little too perfect. It was a little too much of a utopia. And pretty much all of the human beings that they had captured and imprisoned in the Matrix, they were able to... They were able to tell. It was too perfect. It was too good to be true, essentially. And human beings were able to see through it and see that it was a lie. And it did not work. It did not work at all. So the machines had to go back and they had to make adjustments to the matrix. They had to tweak it and add things, take things out. And they did this for a time, creating, making adjustments, making adjustments, making adjustments. Until finally, the machines realized we are never, ever, ever ever going to be able to create a version of the matrix that 100% pacifies the entire human race. It's not possible. There's always going to be some people, some humans that can tell it's bullshit. And they also kept running into uh, the anomaly which was Neo, essentially, or previous versions of Neo. And think about it this way. All of the other human beings in the Matrix that are fighting in the Resistance, Morpheus, um, all, all of them, they are essentially, they, they can tell that the Matrix is a lie, but they cannot see the truth of it. There's a difference, being, there's a difference between knowing that something is a lie and then actually knowing what the truth is. You can you can completely understand and know that something is a lie without actually knowing what the truth is. So that's the way, that's my head canon, how I wrap my head around it. The thing that makes Neo special is it's not just that he knows it's a lie, he can see the truth of it. He can while he's in the matrix, he can see it as coding and he can manipulate that coding. 
everyone else, the fact that they can tell that it's a lie, it gives them the ability to you know, jump, jump higher and farther and run faster, but it doesn't give them the ability to outright break the rules that have been encoded into this program that is the matrix neo can do that because it's it's more than just he sees that it's a lie he knows the truth so the machines kept running into this problem and they knew that like people are always going to rebel we cannot create a perfect matrix so what do we do and they thought okay so the next best thing we can do is every so many years every so many decades so many human generations we're going to need to cull the population of the rebellious people. We're going to, and they're like, okay, so the easiest way to do that is we're going to need to, all of the humans that are resisting us, the ones that they, they, they saw through the matrix, they saw it for the lie that it was, and now they're rebelling. We're going to need to kind of corral them all into one central location and then kill them and just kind of like, you know, harvest the crop and start over. So the easiest way they thought to do this was the let's build a city. They built a city. They built Zion. The machines built Zion. And they took they they waited for the anomaly. The anomaly showed up, the first iteration of Neo, and they it freed some people or whatever uh and basically it created the first group of the rebellious people. And then the the cycle just repeated itself. Some people saw they saw the matrix that it, for it was, for the lie that it was. They were freed. The machines also created the prophecy of the one. They they created that prophecy and they created the oracle, the program of the oracle to facilitate this prophecy. The oracle is a program. And when Neo's first introduced to her, he's like the big question that you're wondering is why would a machine? Because she is essentially a machine. She's a program within the matrix. Why would a machine be working to help the humans? Because she was programmed to. She was programmed to f to facilitate the journey of the one. So that's her programming. The thing about artificial intelligence is the idea behind it is since she is sentient, she's programmed, but she's also sentient, she can come up with her own interpretation of her own programming. So... And she was programmed to facilitate the journey of the one. So she thought, I got to help him. That's what I'm programmed to do. So that explains why she, as a machine, is helping the humans. She was programmed to. And she interpreted her programming as literally as she possibly could. So. Some people rebel. They discover Zion because the machines made it for them. They made it for them to be discovered so that all the humans would be in one central location. Uh, they learn the prophecy of the one. They meet the oracle. The oracle probably seeks them out because she's programmed to. She facilitates the prophecy. She implants it into the rebellious people. They start hunting for the one. They find the one and the anomaly. They get him. They take the anomaly to the oracle. The oracle says, find the key maker because that can take you to the blah, blah, blah. They find the key maker. The one shows up with the key maker at the door, goes through the door, encounters the architect. This is the cycle. Now, what the architect also tells him is, this is the end of the cycle. This point right here. He tells Neo, at this point right now, there are millions upon millions upon millions of machine, those tentacled squid drones, Millions upon millions of them are currently burrowing a tunnel down into Zion as we speak, and they're going to kill every human being they find in there. And Neo's like, you're full of shit, there's no way that's possible. And the machine, the architect's like, you only think it's impossible because you're like, how could, they, how could you have possibly learned the location of Zion? Well, we learned the location of Zion by fucking building it. We built it, Neo. We, the machines, built Zion. We know where it is. We always have known where it is. It was just a clever way to corral all of you rebellious fucks into one location so that we could fucking kill you all in one fell swoop. And Neo's like, well, fuck. And then the architect gives Neo the ultimatum that is always presented with the... Uh, when, when, when the cycle gets to this point. And the ultimatum is, you can go back, you can go back into the real world and go to Zion and fight there alongside your friends and die, or you can take the other door. 
and you can reintegrate your consciousness with the matrix. And what we will, if you do that, what we will allow you to do is we will allow you to choose uh, a group of new people to be the next generation of Zion inhabitants and the next generation of the rebellion. And while you're doing that, we'll repair all the damage to Zion. We'll get it ready for the next group of people to live there and we'll get the ball rolling on the next cycle. The key thing here is every single version of Neo up to this point chose that option. He chose to go through the door because he's like, okay, this, this little portion of humanity that's in Zion right now is doomed. There's millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of these machines on their way there. They're going to get killed. It's over. But what the, what the architect is telling me, if I go through this door and I reintegrate back into the matrix, he's like, I can help foster the next generation of free humanity and hopefully we'll do better next cycle. He's like, he's basically like, if I go into, if I go into the, if I go back to the real world and fight, nothing happens. We get nothing. We just lose because we're going to lose. If I go back to the matrix, I prolong the cycle, but at least there's a chance in the future that another cycle later on will succeed. So every version of Neo prior to Neo chose to go back into the matrix. Neo does not. Neo chooses true rebellion and resistance. And the reason for that is because with Neo, the Oracle tried something new. Remember, her job is to facilitate and further the journey of the one. That's what she's programmed to do. And for this iteration of the one, Neo, she thought about trying something new that she had that that had never been tried before. And that was let's have the one be in love. Let's give him a love interest. Let's give him a significant other, a companion that he truly loves. And that was Trinity. She planted that prophecy and that idea in Trinity's mind very early on, telling him, telling her like, you will, you will fall and you'll know it's the one cause you'll fall in love with him, you know, setting it up, planting the seed in her mind. In doing so though, Neo, when he's forced to make this decision facing the architect, he now has a reason to go back to the real world that none of the previous versions of him had. All the other previous versions, it was just like, Zion's going to get killed by machines, and I might as well go back into the Matrix and repeat the cycle. But in this version, not only was Trinity part of the real world, so he probably would have wanted to go back and be with her anyway, at that moment, when the architect is giving him this ultimatum, Trinity is being fucking murdered by an agent. So that made it even easier. You see it in the movie. Neo really doesn't think about it too long at all. He looks at he looks at the door back to the real he looks at the door back that leads to Trinity. He looks to the door that leads to the Matrix, and then he just directly goes for the one to go back to Trinity. Like he doesn't think about it too long at all. This is the this is the thinking of the Oracle. She due to her being a sentient artificial intelligence she was able to interpret her programming in a not a new way but a definitely a very literal way she's like i was programmed to facilitate and help the one to facilitate that journey so that's what i'm doing and i like i calculated in my mind i thought up like you know it might help him in his journey if he has a love interest if he's in love with someone and so she did that, and it worked. For the first time ever, the anomaly, the one, Neo, chose to return to the rebellion rather than reintegrate back into the Matrix. And because he did that, he was able to, you know, go on into the Machine City uh, and make that deal with the Machine mainframe about how, like, you know, if I defeat Agent Smith for you guys, then peace, and you'll release humans from the Matrix, and we'll figure something else out. And yeah, he was the first one to do it. He was the first one to do it. So that's that scene cleared up and that that that's the scene really. Because the, the third movie is, it's pretty easy to tell what's going on. Neo's going to the machine city. Uh, they're prepare Zion's preparing for a final battle. And then there is the final battle and it's pretty clear. It's like, oh, okay, machines are invading. They're trying to fend them off. The second movie and specifically that scene with the architect is where it gets really hard to follow. But yeah, that's essentially what happened. Neo got in there, he was told by the architect, there have been six previous versions of you, they've all chosen to just repeat the cycle, 
uh, and Neo was the first one to not repeat the cycle. He was the first one to, in other words, he was the first one to truly rebel and resist. He was the first one to go, I'm not giving in to you. I'd rather die. I would rather go back to my friends and my love and my loved ones, specifically Trinity, and die with them than give you what you want. Fuck you. And he went back. He was the first one to truly rebel, and it was his. It was him having a a lover, uh, a love interest, Trinity, that that pushed him to do that. That was what that was what separated him from his previous incarnations. So, yeah, I hope that clears up that scene. I hope that clears up the Matrix a little bit. I'm really excited to see what they do with this fourth movie. I hope it's not a, just a bullshit cash grab. Um, because, uh, you know, spoiler alert, sort of. I mean, the movie's been out for a very long time. If you haven't seen it yet, that's kind of your fault. Uh, Neo dies at the end of the third movie. He sort of sacrifices himself in a way to defeat Agent Smith. So I guess this new movie is going to be... You know, he's his physical body is dead, and it's been dead since the end of the third movie, but uh, his consciousness is still in the Matrix. So, we'll see. But also, we've seen in the trailer for Resurrected, like, he gets a normal human body again. So, I don't know, cloning? I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do here. You would assume that the, they, the machines have invented cloning at this point, or they've got that pretty well down. You know, and who knows, cloning, maybe that's their alternative to power. You know, the hu- the original copies go get to be free, but they make a clone for the machines to harvest power from. I don't know. I have no idea how this is going to go. This is going to be really interesting. And if they pull it off, it's going to be a return of one of the greatest science fiction stories ever of all time, in my opinion. Uh, but if they, man, if, they, if it's just a bag of ass... It's going to really suck. If it's just a bag of ass, I'm just going to regard it the same way I regard the Star Wars sequel trilogy, which is it didn't fucking happen. So, yeah, there's that. So, anybody else, if there's any details about that scene with the architect that I missed or some metaphors or something that you think kind of maybe went over my head, you have some amplifying information, please leave a comment down below. Get a discussion started. Let me know what you think I missed. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. That really helps out the channel. If you want to help out the channel even further, check out some of my other videos and maybe subscribe. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.